they put me down terribly. It was all my fault, you know. A very Freudian Tavistock, you know. It's always the mother's fault. Hello, this is Fatima Gunning and you're watching Grip Media. Today I'm joined in the studio by Dawn, who says her son was a patient at the controversial Tavistock Clinic in the UK. Dawn, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Can you tell us, how did your son get connected to Tavistock in the first place? Uh, it was a referral from the school in London. Um, behavioural problems at start, but he was bullied. He was different slightly and he was referred then to the Tavistock, yeah. And what age would he have been at that point? Eight years old. What did they, did they offer him there? Yeah, there was um, therapy sessions with my husband at the time, myself, and in a different room, my son. So like, you know, you weren't, were you made aware and fully involved in his care as his primary caregiver or? To a degree. To a degree. Yeah. What would you say was the nature of his care plan? Uh, it was to get to the bottom why he's behaving like he was. Uh, he was also very quiet, very introvert. He, um, sometimes he looked very down, depressed, yeah. And how long was he a patient altogether? Well, first for a year there. Uh, then I had to move away. I didn't see them for a while. I asked if we could restart it without my husband because I divorced him. Uh, they, they gave me one session for my son, but there were still problems, you could see. He, he wasn't happy. And they gave me one session and it just says, keep him busy do after school clubs, do this. So I did, but you know, it didn't really help. Yeah, he had two suicide attempts at the age of 15. Um, and then he was, the behavior was really crazy. Um, we were now fully with CAMS, who's Tavistock as well. And he was doing some uh, psychotherapy with Tavistock. And um, it got unbearable. They, uh, they put me down terribly. It was all my fault, you know. A very Freudian Tavistock, you know. It's always the mother's fault. The father wasn't in the picture. He didn't even come to see him. They wouldn't blame him. It's all my fault. Uh, towards the end, it got too difficult. They weren't helping. They were. Putting a, in my opinion, I wasn't part of these sessions, the therapy sessions, but they really put a divide in, uh, you know, among our relationship. You felt that they tried to put a wedge between you and your son? Big, hugely, yeah. He was then violent at home, blaming me for things. He'd smash things up. Uh, I got hurt a few times, uh, got unbearable. I had to put him in a hostel. Uh, just, he was four months before he was 18. I did it deliberately at that point because if I had waited to his 18, he wouldn't have got any help or any support at all. He would have aged out of that system. Yes, yes. And you mentioned to me before that at Tavistock tried to convince your son that he was gay. Can you tell us a bit yeah. more about that, please? Okay, so. Uh, when he was away, but I still kept the contact. I used to meet him outside. I wouldn't allow him in my home because he was smashing it up. And I says, but we can, you can come back. Uh, we just have to work things out. So he was on board with that. He was, you know, he was trying. It was very difficult for him. And um, he, I had a social worker. Uh, who would come to visit me and report to me a little bit. Can you take him back? They just wanted him out of their hands. They wanted to, they wanted me to have the problem. So then now they were changing. So there was this social worker who's kind of in between Lorenzo and the clinics. And he comes to see me and he says, um, um, how would you feel if your son was gay? And I says, um, I don't think he is, however, if that would not be a problem. Now he says to me, but you're Catholic and you must have some issues with this, you know, and 
don't know. I don't. I don't. I honestly don't. I have a brother gay. Uh, we're a very liberal family. We've no problem with gay people. And if that was his only issue, that would be great. But I, I'm not sure it is. Because they kept telling me it was an emotional problem. You're the problem. You as mum. His family is the problem. When he says that to me about being gay, he, he wanted me to, to dismiss the fact. So I asked my son, I was straight, just his son, you know if you're gay, I'm not gay. He says, but sometimes I tell them in the, in the hostel I'm gay, just so they leave me alone. Oh, yeah. He says, but I'm not gay, you know. And did they, did they manage to convince him that he was to any degree? Or? They told him that he could be. It could be something he's fighting inside. He's ashamed of because he comes from a Catholic background, you know. You know, so he says, no, he says, I have an uncle, very gay. <laughs> we love him. You know, he's part of our family. And, you know, that's that. And did they give you... Like, in the midst of those kind of accusations that you were the problem, did they give you any kind of a, like a program? Yeah, guidance. We did have one guidance. We had a, a, a program called MST. I don't know if you ever heard, it's an American thing. And basically, they come to our house. It's a six-week program. And you have got to hide all your sharp objects away. I had to put a lock on my door. And while he was going through this therapy, but it was useless. I told them, I says, I think he has a psychiatric problem. They would not address that. They didn't put him on any kind of medication. Was that through the duration of his treatment? None, none, none whatsoever. Uh, he just had counselling. Um, later on, he refused medication anyway, so that wasn't an issue. But I wanted some anti-anxiety medicine. I wanted this kind of thing. They, they wouldn't entertain it. And how is your son now? struggles with life. We have a good relationship, thank God. Um, he, moved, he moved out of London, that helped. Um, but he struggles in life, he, he really struggles. He can't go out for long, he has anxiety attacks. Um, he gets very paranoid. He was diagnosed later, at the age of 19, with a personality disorder. Was that, and that would have been like external to Tavistock, obviously, because he was an adult at that stage? It was, but the social worker, when he spoke to me, there was another social worker who tried to keep the contact with us. He was a good social worker. Mm -hmm. um, Mitch Collins, I think his name was. Walt Walsh. Mitch Walsh, he was excellent. And he tried to bring us together as a family again. And he told me, he says, why didn't you demand they do something about his um, psychiatric care when he was eight years old? And I says, because I never got a diagnosis. So you didn't know, like, as an eight-year-old? No. But he says, but I saw the reports. He had a psychiatric issue at eight years old. So those, were, those would have been reports that were compiled by Tavistock? Yeah. And then they didn't tell you what the nature of them was? Never. Okay. Never. So in that, I'm assuming he was there for a 10 year period? In and off, 10 years, on, yeah. On and off, okay. And how did you feel when you became aware of Tavistock shutting down and the controversy surrounding that decision? I was horrified. I was in shock. The social worker says, oh, I said something wrong and he backed off. But I was horrified because um, something could have been done when he was young as opposed to later. It's harder now. He's still struggling and, you know, we get private counsellors now. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know what I felt. I think I was horrified. I did write a letter of complaint, but it got nowhere. Deaf ears. And do you know of any other families or children that were affected in a similar way? No, he had one close friend from the school who initially referred him to the Tavistock. And this boy now is, um, 
he was a foster boy, but in the, fostered in the family. He's now on drugs. He's in a poor situation. Um, he's not doing so well either. That's the only one I know of. Irish experts described mm. Tavistock's practices as unsafe as early back as 2019 and were essentially ignored by our HSE. Yeah. Were there similar concerns being raised in the UK? Well, I knew Tavistock has been advised and protected by uh, Stonewall. Do you ever hear Stonewall? Yes. Yeah. So NHS also protect them, you know. Um, so I knew of similar situations, yeah.